Come on, let's praise him together. I want to see you moving. Come on. In the chaos, when I'm far away, I can hear you. I'll never be the same. God, you're calling, calling out my name because you love me. God, you lead me when I've lost my way. You'll never leave me, you never let me stray. When I call you, God, you won't delay because you love me. you today kids Jesus knows each and every one of you and he loves you so let's raise our hands and sing to Jesus
today. He's your Lord. He's your Savior. He loves you. Sing, death could not hold you. Death could not hold you. This is Pastor Shauna and Mr. No, Christian. No, you're not Mr. Shauna. No, okay. Hi, guys. We're back. <laughs> He's messing with me today. Speaking of back, we are going we are to back. throw back. Way back. In our throwback series. Throwback. Missed it. I think you broke <clears> them. And we're going to jump back to when we did our Fruit of the Spirit series. Yes, my favorite one was Patience. Yeah, with the doctor and the water and the slaps. That one hurt. <laughs> you guys ready for this? <laughs> Let's jump to it. Off we go. Hey friends, it's Mr. TJ. I'm back, I've missed you guys. We have a new memory verse today. Are you guys excited? Everyone say Exodus 14, 14. Your turn. Exodus 14, 14. I know our leaders are gonna be giving you guys some prizes if you guys know that. So once again, it's Exodus 14, 14. The Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. So let's see that in the dance form. Here we go. Mr. Beatbox, drop me that beat. Exodus 14, 14. The Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. Woo! I know you guys are ready. Hot and ready. That's what we do down here. Woo! Are you guys excited? I am. It's time for the steps. I know you're yelling right now. Yes, Mr. TJ, yes! Steps, here we go. So you're gonna be stepping with your left and pointing up with your fingers, all right? So it's gonna be the Lord. Yes, the Lord. And then you're going to jump and flex your guns. Here we go. The Lord will fight for you. Yes, do it from the top. Last time, here we go. The Lord will fight for you. After this, you only need to be still. You're gonna love this move. So you're gonna turn to your right, turn to your right, and be still. Your head goes down and your arms go out. Yes, our Fortnite friends know what I'm talking about. This is for you. So anyway, we'll do it from the top. Here we go. Exodus 14, 14. The Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. I think Mr. TG was tripping on his words, but it's okay, let's try it again. Perfection. Excellent, that's what we do here in Awaken. Come on, here we go. Exodus 14, 14. The Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. I know you guys are ready. Here we go, let's get our Sunday on the right foot. Nice, here we go. Mr. Beat Box, Mr. Beat Box, drop me a beat. You guys ready, here we go. Exodus 14, 14 says, the Lord will fight you. You only need to be still. Exodus 14, 14, the Lord will fight for you. You need to only be still. Last time. Exodus 14, 14, the Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. Woo! That 
is what I'm talking about. Solid, hot and heavy. That's what we do. Come on now, practice, practice, practice. I'm so proud of you guys. I'll see you guys next week. Remember, this is Mr. TJ saying, you are revival, come on. Hey kids, it's me, Miss Allie, and I'm so happy to be with you today. So come on close, we're gonna talk about something really, really important today. What could that be? It's gonna be patience. So what does patience mean? Why is that important? Well, patience is basically your ability to deal with the really hard things that can happen in life without getting upset or angry or maybe exploding in an emotion. Sometimes patience can be really, really hard because we all experience hard things in life, right? Maybe you have a friend that's just not being super nice to you today. What would be the opposite of a patient reaction? Let's say if someone's being mean and instead of being patient, you're mean right back to them. That's not really staying calm, is it? No, but to be patient, that means instead of reacting emotionally in a way that's angry or unkind, maybe you just say to a friend, hey, I feel like something is off with you today. What's going on? That's what it looks like to be patient. Maybe we have something happening that we don't like, somebody's treating us a certain way we don't like, or maybe we just see things differently. Some people love dogs and some people love cats, but patience means that you can deal with any of your friend's pets. <laughs> One of the best examples of someone who is patient in the Bible is Joseph. And I know you guys talked about him recently, so I'm gonna let you know some of the ways he was one of the most patient people we've seen in the Bible. As you may know, Joseph was very favored by his father, and he was someone that was just so full of life and really loved God. His brothers didn't really like that though. They didn't seem to enjoy all the attention he was getting instead of them. So they did something terrible. They took Joseph and they abandoned him and left him all by himself. Could you imagine if that happened to you? If your family abandoned you? I would be so angry, so sad, and not only that, they abandoned him and he was sold into slavery. He was taken from his home and thrown in a place where he didn't even know anyone. Then it gets worse. Some of the people in the place he was meant to serve accused him of things that he didn't do. Really, really bad things. But then it gets even worse. Some of the people in the house he was serving at accused him of things that were not true. Very bad things that got him thrown into prison. But Joseph did not curse God. He did not curse his brothers. He didn't act out in anger. What did he do? He was patient. In every circumstance, he chose to follow God. And the Bible says God was with him. And he chose to always bring his best, to always focus on what would God do in this situation? What would God have me do? And even though he was in these terrible situations, he kept getting promoted every single time. Could you imagine if we all took a few minutes just to be a little more patient in our lives, maybe we could have that kind of joy too. And God tells us he wants to give us that kind of joy. If we seek him first, we will bring that patience into our lives. About ready? Hold up. One second. I'm waiting. Can you guys can step to the right, please. All right. Yeah, a little bit, no. All right. And find the middle, find the middle. That's good. Okay, we're gonna start. Ready. About time, okay. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready, yep. In three, two, one, <laughs> action. Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Christian, your friendly neighborhood storyteller. Um, <clears throat> Cut. Oh gosh. We're gonna start over again. Okay, yeah, this is good. This is good. This okay. is good for me. Um, Practice what you preach. Just, just uh, act natural. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You love the kids. You love the kids. I love the kids. I know. Yeah. Okay. We're going to start again then. Great. Okay. And ready in three, two, one. Action. What's going on, guys? It, oh, oh my. Yeah, right. Come on. Too early. I'm sorry. You, you got to wait for action and then start. Don't, don't speak over me, please. Okay. Got you're, it. You're doing great, though. You're doing great. Thanks. Ready in three, two, one. What's going on, kids? Action! My, oh, gosh. Hey, guys! It's me, Christian, your friend in the neighborhood storyteller. So today we are talking about 
Patience, that's correct. I think you said it. If you didn't say it, shame on you. I'm kidding. No shame on you because, you know, we love God and we don't do that in church. <laughs> kind of. So anyways, we're talking about patience and I think Allie did a fantastic job of explaining what patience is and giving a great example of patience working in somebody's life. Biblically. Bib biblically. Biblically. In the Bible. So she talked about Joseph and Joseph's story is insane in the cranium. Now, I want to talk about another aspect of patience. So a lot of what Miss Allie talked about was um, when you're in difficult situations or things are happening, they're crazy around you, not reacting out of anger or frustration or exploding with some kind of emotion. But instead you handle it with peace and with calmness. And you're really like, you're just like super chill about everything in the midst of craziness. Now that is a great example of patience and Joseph is a fantastic example of that. But I want to bring to light another definition of the word patience. Everybody say this with me after I say it and then you say it and then we'll say it together, I guess. Uh, long suffering. Let's we'll say it together. Long suffering. Fantastic, you guys nailed it. Nailed it. <clears throat> so before I go into this next thing, I kind of want to give you an example of what it looks like to be patient with patients. For instance, two doctors, two dentists, dare I say it, two dentists having patients with patients. Let's check it out. All right, Mr. Boone, Mr. Boone, <clears throat> Mr. Boone, hi, how are you doing? I'm your doctor, Dr. Uh, Dividus, Jim Dividus, nice pleasure. to meet you. So Mr. Boone, what have we got working on today? Oh yeah, I got in the bottom left hand corner, I got a bit of an infraction. It's a bit of an irritation on my All right, let's lower. just take a look. All right, open up there. Ah, All right, nice ah, and wide for me. Ah, All right, hold it still. Ah, ah, ah. So Mr. Boone, you got any kids? Oh yeah. All right, uh, uh, please don't talk when I'm working on you. Now you have kids. You got a wife then too, right? Yeah, of course. Right, don't, right. Mr. Boone, please don't talk when I'm working on you, okay? Now. Let's look at this. Oh, that looks bad. Oh, that looks real bad. Can you not cop? Mr. Boone, Mr. Boone, I can't. I can't work like this when, when you're copping in my sorry, face. Sorry, it won't happen again. I'm All right, one sorry, last look. Sorry, Open up. Terribly sorry. Nice and wide. Ah. Say, ah. Uh, uh, that's all right. right. All right. So, <clears throat> Mr. Boone, look, after some careful observation, I've decided that you've got a few cavities in the back there. And so we're going to do what we call in the dental industry. That's the old drill and fill. Huh? Drill and fill. Oh, okay. Yeah, so first yeah. we drill it, then we fill it. I thought that's what. It's gonna cost you about an arm and a leg, but it's worth it. <sighs> Listen, um, I know that's probably your professional opinion, it but is. I thought it'd be easier to just kind of pull it out of there. <laughs> so yeah, we can well, see this? Just... Tooth? That tooth means that I'm the dentist. I'm the professional, and so drill and fill. <laughs> Okay, be that as it may. And it may. And it be. Okay. I really think we, let's just, I'm just gonna make the call. Let's just pull it out of there, okay? Well, <laughs> Mr. Boone, we're gonna go with drill and fill, okay? Tell you what, why don't we get a um, second opinion? Yeah. We can do that, sure. Okay? Okay. All right, All great. Right. I'll be back with that uh, second opinion for you. Perfect. Wasn't that great? Oh, good job, doctors. Doctor, doctor, patient, you did fantastic. So proud of them. Now, I do wonder, and I bet you're wondering too, because let's be honest, we all want a good laugh on a Sunday or any other day of the week you might be watching this, what would it look like if maybe two doctors or dentists didn't have as much patience with their patients as you would hope or didn't have patience with another doctor in the room with their patients or without? Let's check this one out. All right, Mr. Boone. Mr. Boone? <clears throat> Mr. Boone, hi. How are you doing? I'm your doctor, Dr. Uh, Dividus, pleasure. Jim Dividus. Pleasure. Nice to pleasure. meet you. So, Mr. Boone, what have we got working on today? Oh, yeah, I got in the 
bottom left hand corner, I got a bit of an infraction. It's a bit of an irritation on my. All right, let's lower. just take a look. All right, open up there. Ah, All right, nice ah, and wide for me. Ah, All right, hold it still. Ah, ah, oh, ah. So, Mr. Boone, you got any kids? Ah, yeah. All right, uh, uh, please don't talk when I'm working on you. Now you have kids. You got a wife then too, right? Yeah. Right, right, don't, right. Mr. Boone, please don't talk when I'm working on you, okay? Now. Let's look at this. Oh, that looks bad. Oh, that looks real bad. Can you not cop, Mr. Boone? Mr. Boone, I can't. I can't work like this when when you're copping in my sorry, face. Sorry, it won't happen again. I'm All right, one sorry, last look. Sorry, Open up. Terribly sorry. Nice and wide. Ah. Say ah. ah. All righty then. Okay. Well, Mr. Boone, after some careful observation, uh, you got a few cavities in the back there, and so I think the best way to go is what we call in the dental industry as drill and boom. What? Drill and fill. Oh, okay. See, I, I was, I was kind of hoping it might be easier just to kind of pull it out of there. So, oh sure, we could definitely easier, cheaper too. But trust me, drill and fill is the way to go. Okay, well, be that as it may, I think we should just pull it out. Well, I am the professional, so we're gonna drill and fill. We're gonna pull it out. Drill and fill, pal. Pull it out. Drill and fill. Pull it out. Drill and fill. Uh, pull oh. it out. <laughs> Drill and fill. Pull it out. Drill and fill. Pull it out. Ah! Drill and fill. Pull it out. Ah! Drill and fill. Pull it out. Ah! Drill and fill. <laughs> okay. Pull. Mr. Boone, <clears throat> Jim Joyce. <laughs> now, um, yeah, probably not the best way to handle the situation. Uh, it's ironic that the patient had more patience than the doctor, who are the ones who should have patience. Get patience, like patient and patience, like like a like a doctor has patience. But he probably doesn't have patience with the pain. You get it, right? Okay, it's a terrible joke. So, anyways, um, so uh, kind of based off of that, okay, uh, getting water dumped on your head. That to me, that's like suffering. That is long suffering. So, patience, long suffering. What is a great example of long suffering? Ladies and gentlemen, my favorite, you've heard this guy about this guy so many times because he's my favorite. David, King David. Now, not, I don't want to talk about David when he was the king. I want to talk about David before he was the king in kind of the middle process. So we know the story. David was anointed to be king, but while he was anointed to be king, there was still a king over all of Israel named Saul, right? Well, kind of the way the story goes is after David lays it down on Goliath, you know, timber and down rose Frazier. Once he takes out Goliath, uh, things are awesome. In fact, the king, Saul, invites him into his house, and it's, the Bible says that Saul was uh, tormented by spirits, by demons. Now, when he was tormented by these spirits, David, <laughs> your boy knew how to play the harp, and he'd be like, bow, 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 bow. probably not that song specifically, but he played music and it soothed Saul. So Saul really liked him, but, just as the story goes, David basically went out and like killed a bunch of dudes, bad dudes, bad, really bad people, people who are against God's people. So it was totally fine. So he went out and killed a bunch of these people. And then when he came back into town, Saul was rolling in and they're like, 
everyone's like singing they're like yo Saul killed like a thousand people but David killed like ten thousand Saul killed like a thousand people but David killed like ten thousand Saul got so jealous of David now this kid is like between 14 to 16 years old he's not he's a kid and this dude is a dude like a real dude. like he's a tall kingly dude and then there's little David who like whooped up on some some people and then you know Saul got jealous so long story short uh, Saul tried to kill David threw a spear at him <laughs> missed ha missed me Ping! and like there's a spear in the wall it was insane so then he spends 14 years running away from the man that he was trying to serve 14 years that's either that or that I, I don't know which one's right but whichever one 14 years years some of you guys you guys aren't even 14 years old most of you yeah it's like basically your entire lifetime he ran away from Saul and during this whole process he had opportunities to get back at Saul he had opportunities to take Saul out in fact there was one part in the Bible where David's hiding away in this cave and Saul and his army came looking for David and David's like hiding away in this cave and he's like oh they can't see me he's hiding in the shadows and then <laughs> this is so great the Bible says that Saul went to relieve himself so either he was you know going pee or he was pooping he might have been pooping can you imagine that dude pooping and you come up and you're right there like close enough the Bible says that he cut off a corner of his robe he was close enough to kill the man that was trying to kill him but he didn't do it he kept patience throughout this entire 14 years and it eventually came to the point where David had a group of men around him that Bible calls him the mighty men and he was he was going to war against the enemies of Israel while Saul was doing the same thing someone brought word that Saul and his son had both died and so David was going to be a was going to be the king over Israel well see what's interesting about this is David's patience didn't stop there even in Saul's death David still had patience for the man in fact he mourned the death of the man who tried to kill him it's insane someone came up to him and was like yo <laughs> hey David Saul's dead he's like what and then the guy like kind of took credit for like Saul dying Saul didn't die by his hand Saul died by his own hand and so he took credit for the you know the dying who tried to take credit for somebody else's murders just some kind of not nice dude so he hears this uh this news and he looks at the guy who told him he saw that the dude was really stoked about it and let's just say he punished him eternally he died the man died yeah kind of intense David was an intense dude also very emotional but super intense but needless to say David had patience throughout this entire journey and that patience paid off eventually he was not only just the king he is still to this day known as the greatest king in all of Israel and a lot of that is due to his patience in that time now that my friends is what long suffering is all about so let's be honest during this weird time where things are crazy everyone has to wear masks and you can't you know stand within however many feet apart from all the what all the stupid rules and whatever we honor the law and I'm gonna start over because I'm <laughs> got on a tangent <laughs> so no matter how crazy things get and this kind of crazy time where there are certain rules in place that weren't normal for a long time even in this time being patient with people pays off and a lot of times it does feel like you are suffering for a long time but let me promise you that when you have patience so the Bible says in James 1 3 that know that the, the testing of your faith produces patience and when you let patience have its perfect work you will be left complete and perfect lacking nothing so patience is a good thing patience as they say is a virtue so ladies and gentlemen let's have some virtue let's have some patience as we go through the rest of our week and this has been story time with me Christian Waples and until next time Auf Wiedersehen or some other language TTFN talk for now bye bye Cut. all right we're done we're done patience believe that practice what you preach okay <laughs>